Oh, I bought a new monitor yesterday. Cool. Yeah, it hasn't arrived yet. I haven't been waiting for it to arrive at my house, but it was like uh, 300 bucks. It's a 4K monitor. Sounds nice. Yeah. I'm really excited to get it because I've been using literally the monitor that I'm using. One of my old roommate, or one of my, one of my roommates at the place I was living at previously, he went to a electronics recycling center and saw this big monitor sitting in a garbage can. Mm -hmm. at the electronics recycling center and went, huh, I wonder if I can use that. So he took it, he brought it home, <laughs> it worked. And then when he got a new monitor, he was like, hey, do you want this old monitor? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. <laughs> so I took it. I started using it. The first day I started using it. This is a fun story. Half of the left-hand side of the monitor, like split exactly down the middle of the left-hand side, we get this weird red, like just thin red lines going all the way down it. Mm-hmm. And I dealt with that for like a week, and then one day I, was, I turned to my computer and I saw those red lines, and I went bonk and hit the top of my monitor and out of like it. irritation, and they went away. <laughs> and they have not come back. So, oh, no, they came back once when I moved, and I plugged my monitor in at my new house. Those lines appeared, and I went bonk, and then it disappeared. <laughs> so, I've literally, I'm still using a monitor that is quite literally a trash monitor. <laughs> you got it out of the garbage. I got it out of the garbage. That is the one I'm still using. It is only 1080p. <laughs> so I finally have moved into the year 2022. Only 1080p. There are people out there still using SDTVs. Well, that's true. I finally moved into the year 2018 and I have a 4K monitor. Okay. <laughs> on the way here. But is it 3D enabled? Uh, no, but it does have speakers built into it. Is it a smart monitor so you can see cool ads? No. Oh no, what a disappointment. What a disappointment. Oh no. Oh no. So sad. Uh, this weekend I went to, or this last weekend, I went to a two-gun competition. Because you only have two guns. <laughs> no, but I can see where the confusion, a two-gun competition is rifle and pistol. Right, okay. So you, you do stages where, it, it, like, normally in a shooting competition, it would just be, like, one like one gun. Or unless it's, like, cowboy shooting, and then it's, like, several di Whatever. Anyway, yeah, I don't two know. You don't need to shoot any cowboys. They're, it's fine. They're already an endangered species. Yeah, they're really hard to find now. It's, it's really disappointing that during our genocidal westward expansion, so many of the settlers just shot the cowboys standing in fields and then left them there to rot. They didn't know we had a limited supply. They didn't even use all the cowboy! <laughs> Can't even those disgusting bastards shot the cowboy, didn't even bother to take his 10-gallon hat. They just wanted his star badge, and that was it. Yeah. And with a two-gun competition is where you have a rifle and a pistol. Okay. And you have to, sometimes you have to transition between using the rifle and using the pistol, like on the same stage. Okay, okay. Anyway, uh, it, was a, it was a rude awakening for how out of practice and out of shape I am. Oh, yeah? It had been a while since I went to a shooting competition, and I did not do I It was over two days... It was a shooting competition over two days. I did so bad on, well, in my mind, I did so bad on the first day that I didn't go back for the second day. We are our harshest critics. I was so disappointed in myself that I didn't go back <laughs> the second day. Well, there might be some seasoned veterans there. In fact, you're probably competing against a lot of seasoned veterans and not just people who are casually interested in... You know, there, there, were, there were a decent amount of both people that were there for competition and people that were there just for fun. I just did really... I, I was not pleased with myself. There were some really cool stages, though. Well, next time I'll go with you so you can feel better about yourself as you outshoot me. Then again, I was an expert marksman. I don't know. Might show you up. See, the thing is, the, the marine expert marksman, you're shooting, at a, you're shooting at a target that's the size of a small SUV. <laughs> it's a pretty, uh, pretty big target. It's a yeah. really big target. And yes, well, you have to is... shoot it from 500 meters away. Yes, but still, the, the whole point of having the target that big is to build confidence. <laughs> it's a confidence builder. <laughs> the army, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the marines some shit here. Mm -hmm. The marines, you shoot at a target that's the size of a small sport utility vehicle from uh -huh. 500 meters... The army you shoot at a target from 500 meters that is a man-sized target. Mm hmm And it is not easy to hit that thing. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway. One of the stages was really cool because the entire... Usually the stages are there's like a bunch of things set up and you have to move from like one point to another one and shoot at a bunch of different targets. Mm -hmm. um, one of the stages was really cool because you shot the entire stage from sitting inside a vehicle. Ooh, all right. You're, so They were teaching you... They were testing your ability to do drive-bys. 
No, this one, there, you didn't shoot from a moving vehicle. That was a different stage. Well, drive-bys are you drive to your target, then you stop and you shoot them and you drive away. Well, the other one I shot while the vehicle was moving. Okay, so this, a proper drive-by. No, a proper <laughs> drive-by. This one, this one was you were sitting in the driver's seat, and then when the timer went off, you had to engage a target that was out the left side of the vehicle, engage these two little tiny, they were like the size of bowling pins, mm -hmm. and they were probably like... 15, 20 meters away. Okay. So there's two like bowling pin size targets that are side by side, and then one bowling pin size target in the middle, and you're not supposed to hit the bowling pin size target in the middle. Hmm. You have to hit the two on the sides, but not the one in the middle. Okay. So you have to hit those, and then when you would shoot this other target, it would fall down, and another target would pop up as the first one was falling down. This is not the bowling pin target. This no, this is a different one. Okay. So you would shoot a uh, Ipsic target, which is like the, it's like torso sized. That's how big an Ipsic target is. Okay. It's like the size of a torso. You shoot one of those, and when it falls down, another target pops up. So you have to hit that one, but you only have like one second to hit that target. You gotta go fast. Yeah. There's another one that pops up. Like, it, they had this really cool mechanism, so the target would go up and then back down all on its own in front of the vehicle. There's no specific rifle you have to shoot or a specific pistol. You can bring your own. There, yeah, yeah. Everybody brings their own their own firearms to shoot, but there is technically a requirement because this was a this was a combat rifle competition, so it had to be it had to be some type of combat rifle. It could you couldn't shoot it with a pistol caliber carbine. It had to be like a five five six or three hundred blackout or whatever. It had to be some type of like combat rifle. Okay, so you didn't have to use a specific weapon, but there were guidelines yeah, on what kinds of yeah, weapons. Yeah, and there's a lot of guidelines. There were a few people at least I was annoyed at myself, but at least I didn't get disqualified. Ooh, how would you get disqualified? There there's a lot of ways you can one of the people in our group got disqualified because while he was getting into a vehicle, um, the muzzle sweeped or he accidentally swept his foot with the muzzle of his rifle, so they disqualified him. Oh. So yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can technically get disqualified. I see. Did you have to shoot from your own vehicle, or did they provide vehicles for you to do? Oh a yeah, they fight? had like a little Polaris Razor thing that you <laughs> shot from. And then the what the stage where you were shooting from inside a vehicle that was in like a, a salvaged car. It was just it was a, an old disgusting car that didn't actually work anymore. Did you have to drive the vehicle yourself? Was it a manual transmission? No, no. The um, the one where you shot from a moving vehicle, there was the um, the the range officer. There were two range officers on that one, and the range officer drove the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then you shot from the passenger seat of the vehicle. Okay. Uh, the one where you shot from inside a vehicle on one of the targets, I had to shoot out the right side of the vehicle, mm -hmm. and my first shot went straight through the A pillar on the the windshield. I'm assuming that's a good thing. No, that's not a good thing. Wait, is that your windshield you hit, is it? The the windshield was completely gone. There was no windshield. In the, they had taken out all the windows in the vehicle. Then how did you hit the windshield? No, I hit the A pillar. The thing, the two bars that come up that that hold the windshield in place. Oh, I hit that one. How did you do that? Uh, because so the problem with the VHS, or as it's known in the United States, the uh, Springfield Hellion, which is a stupid name, and mm. I hate calling it that. Yes. The problem with that gun is that you have a pretty good height over bore. So like you have the barrel here, and then there's a lot of material, and then the optic is a good distance above it. So when I'm aiming at something like. Because the A-pillar is only, like, three feet away from me, okay. from where I'm sitting. So when I'm aiming, it from my optic, and when you're moving really quickly, from my optic, it looks like I have a clear shot. Mm -hmm. But the muzzle is not clear. Mm. So the, my first shot, I fired it, and I just see bits of the A-pillar go, boom, and explode out of the front of the car. And the guy said muzzle, which means that you are, you're hitting something. <laughs> Or you're about to hit something. And I knew before he even said it that I had just smoked that A-pillar. I took one more shot. The second shot went straight through the A-pillar. And I went, yeah, I can't hit this target. And I just moved on to the next one. So you were shooting the A-pillar, which is a part of the car you're in. Yeah. <laughs> instead of instead of the target. One of my friends... because there was So there was a car, the car that you were in. Mm -hmm. And there was another car that was next to it. When he went to shoot at the same target that I smoked the A-pillar at... He shot at that one, and the bullet went through one of the wiper blades of the car next to it, and took the a chunk of the wiper blade and stuck it into the target. It sounds like you guys are doing this thing with your eyes closed. How are you hitting these things? Height over bore is a thing. So, like, it looks like you have a clear line of sight, especially when it's stuff that's really close to you. Mm -hmm. It's There are so many videos of people accidentally just drilling a hole through the, the bench they're sitting at. 
because it looks like they have a clear line of sight, but their barrel is, there's like something right in front of their barrel. Okay. And especially when you're trying to go quickly, when you're under a shot timer, you start forgetting about all kinds of crap. Your brain is just like, nope, I'm in adrenaline mode. I got to shoot this thing. So height overboard, to be clear, because I'm, I'm terrible with this kind of terminology. Uh, you were looking down the optic, yeah. and the optic was clear. Your barrel is below it, and the yeah. barrel is not clear. Yeah. The sights are not the same hole that the bullet is going down. But then you took a second shot and hit it again? Yeah, I, th- I, I adjusted, and I took a second shot, and it still wasn't quite right. This all happens within the time span of about one and a half seconds. The My first shot... Realizing I hit the pillar, the guy telling me I hit the pillar, me adjusting and taking the second shot all happens within about one and a half seconds. Mm. You're you're doing a lot of real quick, okay, I need to do this. Nope, that didn't work. Do this. Okay. Yeah, so that that happened. To be fair, I was not the only person that did that by a long shot. Okay. There were a lot of people that did... By the time this stage was done... Like, by the time everybody had shot this, <laughs> yeah. that A-pillar had been taped back together probably about 12 <laughs> times. Mm-hmm. So I was not the only person that just absolutely smoked that thing. How would you feel to be the person who donated that vehicle to be used in the firing line? How bad could a bunch of... They're trained marksmen. How, how, what's the worst damage they can do to it? <laughs> Fortunately, these were all vehicles that were that were destined for the scrapyard anyway they weren't before they are now they were they were like th- literally the drive shaft was in the back of this vehicle <laughs> like all of the windows were busted this is a vehicle that had been in an accident mm. somebody had had sold it for scrap and then these people had bought it for scrap mm. brought it here they're going to use it for a bunch of stages and then resell it for scrap i see yeah it's still functional, but barely. Not great. No, it was not functional. They they had to bring both of those vehicles there on a tra- on a trailer and push <laughs> them into place. So you weren't actually riding in someone's vehicle as they were driving it around. It was being towed by a tractor or something. Th- that vehicle was completely immobile. It did not move. Oh, okay. There was another stage earlier where I had sat in one of those little four-wheel off-road vehicles, the, the Polaris Razor type thing. Okay. I sat in one of those and I shot from one of those while it was moving. All right. But that was done in such a way that there was no way I would be able to hit anything inside the vehicle. Well, now I know. Anyway, yeah, it was a fun two-gun competition. It was really interesting. Um, I really enjoyed it. I bruised up my wrist at one point using a riot shield thing. You, oh, you had to use a riot shield to shoot yeah, this? Yeah, they, they made a riot shield out of, uh, out of like plywood. Was that part of the pistol shooting part? That was part, that was part of the first stage that I did. Which is the pistol shooting part, I assume? The, the pistol shooting part happens, like, throughout. Okay. The, the way you do this is they have a bunch of squads. So they have squad one, two, three, four, and five. Mm-hmm. And then they have stage one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Squad one starts on stage one. Squad one goes to stage one. Everyone shoots it. Squad one moves to stage two. Mm-hmm. And it goes like, so you, everyone just round robins it. So I like gotcha. my squad started on on stage five. Stage five was the one where you had a, where you had like a wooden riot shield. And the way they had made the riot shield, um, the way they had made the riot shield is it was basically just a piece of plywood with a handle mm-hmm. and then another, like a, another metal bar under it. Okay. That would like, you could brace your wrist on. So you had to shoot around the shield at like targets. Have to hold a shield in your face, then shoot. With your other hand. Yeah, which, I mean, that's a thing that, like, SWAT teams do. They have a setup so they can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, So I had to do that one. And then when I went to put the riot shield down, I bonked it on something. So the the metal armband jammed into my wrist. So I got bruised up right there. That's okay. It's not like your wrists weren't already injured. I was like, whatever. I don't know. It's it's fine. It It really, honestly, it didn't hurt that bad. It was fine. Okay. Now that you know that you're uh, lacking in skill for shooting at this thing, would you be practicing more? I know ammunition is expensive. I want to do once a week where I go and just practice doing target acquisition, transition drills, a bunch of different like shooting practice. But like realistically, it's probably going to end up being like twice a month that I'm going to end up doing this. Okay. But I, I just, I need, I need more practice. Yeah. Which is, I, I think is actually a, a really good thing to bring up here is that I, I hate it when people get guns and they think that having a gun will make them safer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because I, I, I th- I'm pretty sure this is in like the frequently asked questions on my on my Twitch page. Getting a gun and then thinking the gun will make you safer is like buying a miter saw and then being like, why isn't my house built? <laughs> it's like buying a car and then wondering why you aren't just at the store. Mm-hmm. You've got to put in some effort. Yeah, you have to. If 
you, you need you need to practice to be to be better at something and clearly that is something that I have been uh, I have been lazy on been neglecting it I haven't been neglecting marksmanship I still do like I still do marksmanship training I've just been severely neglecting moving and shooting practicing at target transitions practicing at getting sight acquisition in really uncomfortable and weird positions I guess yeah so that's that's what I've been that's what I've been slacking on. I guess there's two options for you then. You could either practice all these skills on being able to wield your firearm while you're in motion, or you could only do shooting competitions where everything is stationary. Yeah, but I don't want to do I don't want to do boomer competitions. <laughs> boomer competitions. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to do I don't want to do that boomer shit. Uh-huh. I want to be cool. I want to be a cool guy. I want to be Mr. Cool Guy. I think I'm special forces running around on the firing range with a lot of really expensive equipment, and I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> I don't want to be a boomer. I want to be tactical. Yeah, I want to be mall ninja. I don't want to be a boomer. 